So, Mr. Trump is uh, on a tour of the Middle East. Poor man, he's got such a hard time in his own country. Of course, what what would one do in a similar situation? I know what I would do. I would go on a nice long holiday, which is perhaps what he's what he's intending to do. And of course, what country one would would one go to to have a have a, a well deserved rest? from all the furore which has uh, arisen in the United States. Naturally, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, this paradise of democracy, of human rights, of religious uh, uh, fervor and so on and so forth. Yes, uh, what a pleasant change to step down the, the steps of the, of the airplane together with, with his uh, beautiful wife and to be welcomed by these uh, paragons of virtue, these, uh, these holy men of the royal house of Saud. Wonderful. The embraces, the love, the adoration, the unity. What a change it made. What a pleasant change from the, the kind of uh, disagreeable publicity that he's had to put up the poor man in the United States. Yes, isn't it noticeable how not just uh, President Trump, but all the leaders of the Western world are very fond of this regime in Saudi Arabia. Arabia it really is a wonderful regime. A regime, of course, which uh, has got uh, not a single uh, trace of democracy about it. A regime which specializes in uh, trampling under night and under, under, underfoot human rights, not just in Saudi Arabia but also in Yemen, where they're engaged in a criminal war about which very little is said, by the way, in the Western uh, media. They've conveniently hushed up this criminal genocidal war in uh, Yemen. I can't describe it any other way. Where this uh, wonderful Saudi regime is systematically murdering with the active support of American imperialism and British imperialism and French imperialism and all the rest. They're condemning millions of people to a terrible death. Men, women and children, oh yes, every day. Millions of people are facing a horrible, lim a lingering, painful death through starvation. Well, this so-called coalition of the, of the Saudis is systematically bombing what? Warehouses where grain is stored and ports, where, because Yemen has got, has got to import uh, all its food practically, systematically bombing, they put it on the television, they, they, they systematically target the, the cranes which are used to unload, sh unload ships. How can a crane unlo unloading grain from ships be considered to be a, a, a terrorist target or a military target. But that's what's taking place. It's taking place with the active support of officers, of military specialists from America and from Britain. Wonderful democratic Britain. Theresa May, this wonderful woman. Yes, strong and stable. Strong and stable support for, this, for the Saudi gangsters who are systematically murdering millions of people in Yemen, with the active support of, uh, of London, of the military establishment, of course, there's a principle involved, isn't there? I forgot to answer, uh, mention cholera, which the United Nations has just uh, explained, that there's another epidemic of cholera taking place. A terrible, horrible death for men, women and children and so on. While these gangsters are systematically preventing, deliberately preventing, the shipment of food and medicines to, to the Yemen. That's the kind of activities engaged by these wonderful uh, uh, holy men in, uh, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Oh yes, inside Saudi Arabia itself, they engaged in charming activities like uh, mass executions, floggings for minor trivial offenses, cutting off of hands, of thieves for stealing. This is the kind of, of regime. Crucifixion, yes, that's a charming little de device. The Romans used to do that a long time ago. The Saudis are doing it today. And of course, the, the agents in Syria, because they're behind the, 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 the mad dogs, the, the jihadi uh, monsters in Syria, are doing the same things. Like t torturing, killing people, wh whipping people, raping uh, young girls and so on and so forth, crucifying, all with the active support 
of these Wahhabi gangsters exported, deliberately exported by Saudi Arabia. That's the kind of company which Donald uh, Trump and Theresa May delight in, in keeping. Of course, there's a principle involved, is there not? Of course. Trump announced this great principle. What's the great principle? Which attracts them to uh, Saudi Arabia, to Riyadh, as flies are uh, attracted by I could say an unpleasant word, attracted by a honeypot, shall we say. Yes, a honeypot would be more appropriate. What's the principle? Well, Mr. Trump said it on the, in front of all the television cameras, didn't he say it? What's the principle? Not democracy, not religion, oh no, n not, not peace, nothing like that, nothing so mundane as that. It's money, my friends, money, 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 yes, a big contract. 100 uh, billion was it? Yes, I think it was. 100 billion dollars worth of arms, an arms deal. Wonderful. So more bombs will rain down on the, on the defenseless people of the Yemen. And of course, the, the money will be made by American, uh, American arms manufacturers and British and French and German uh, arms manufacturers. That's a wonderful symbiosis which really sums up, completely sums up, accurately sums up the real nature of Western uh, civilization, Western democracy, Western values, Western humanitarianism. There you have it in a nutshell. By the way, the same Trump that tried to exclude uh, Muslims from America, oh, not Saudis, however. Saudis were mysteriously excluded, as if they weren't part of the Muslim world. They're not excluded, included in this. But he wanted to ban. He said that Islam, that Islam hates us, he says. Now it's the same Trump stands up in front of all these gangsters, gangsters, reactionary gangsters, creatures from all over the Muslim world. Not just the Saudis, of course, the biggest monsters of all. Uh, and uh, praises, oh, it's good, it's Muslim, Islam is okay, yes, we're all friends, we're all against terrorism. Of course, he attacks Iran. As if Iran was responsible for these monsters, these jih jihadi monsters running amok in Syria and Iraq, which Trump says, says anyway, that he's going to fight against. I don't see much evidence of it. He's mainly interested in fighting Iran and bombing uh, Iranian uh, militia, which he did the other day in, in, in Syria. So the whole thing, frankly, is, is a, a, a repulsive spectacle which would fill any uh, no, no, normal uh, mortal with a sense of absolute disgust from start to finish. But of course, Mr. Trump's holiday is not finished, is it? He's now taken the place, the first time, imagine it. Imagine, that's a real uh, uh, gesture of peace, isn't it? The first time that a direct flight was to stage from Saudi Arabia to where? To Israel, of course. That, uh, that other bastion of human rights and, uh, and religious rectitude and so on and so forth. And there, of course, he had an even more enthusiastic welcome, if that, if that were possible, from uh, Netanyahu, Bibi as he called him. Bibi and his wife and his, uh, the other gang all turned up with a gigantic red uh, carpet. I don't, know how, I don't know how many miles that carpet extended for. It seemed a pretty long one to me. With the military band, with the feasting, with the, 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 uh, with, the, with the welcome that one would expect as a normal American tourist visiting a country of the Middle East. Oh yes. And of course in present, uh, Bibi uh, Netanyahu actually said, we love you. Of course, why shouldn't they love him? When he's leaning over backwards to support the monstrous actions of the Israeli uh, gang in, uh, in Palestine. Oh, he did happen to see Abbas also, this poor little uh, uh, midget uh, Abbas, just, just to satisfy the Palestinians. But no, this, uh, this uh, is a monstrous charade. I was watching the other day uh, Al Jazeera's coverage <laughs> and the uh, the uh, uh, the person responsible for the for, for, for the Palestinian coverage of Al Jazeera, he actually said uh, to the cameras, he says, "Look, all this talk about peace. Oh yes, he's going to solve the the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict, the Palestinian conflict. He's going to solve all this, the Palestinian problem. 
How he's going to solve it, we don't really know. But he's, he assures us anyway that he is going to solve it without any bother whatsoever. Of course, exactly the same uh, promises were made in the past by other American presidents, by Bill Clinton, by Obama, uh, by Reagan, and they all made the same, exactly the same speech. So what's changed? Well, n nothing whatsoever. The spokesman for Al, Al Jazeera, I thought, put it rather well. He said, this speech of uh, Trump concerning solving the Palestinian uh, problem uh, 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 is so empty of content that it does not really uh, admit of any uh, political analysis. It can't be analyzed because there's nothing to analyze. It is a PR stunt. Yes, and that's just what it is. That's typical of Trump, isn't it? You know, This TV celebrity, which has become now the president of the most powerful country on earth. Beware of TV celebrities, my friends. They're rather a treacherous uh, and rather stupid breed. It's got to be said. Yes, PR, and that's all this is. All, all this, is. this entire uh, charade, this pantomime, this circus of Trump's visit to the Middle East, of course, it has no content whatsoever except one thing. And that is a desperate attempt to prop up uh, Trump's position uh, in America itself. In relation to that, by the way, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who's worse, Trump or the other gang. The Democrats, the so-called Democrats, the so-called liberals. I, I, I've grown to detest the liberals, so-called liberals, more every, every day that I see them uh, in, in action. You know, I ask myself very often, what would have happened, for instance, if Bernie Sanders would He could have won the election. If he'd have had the courage of his convictions, he could have won. If he hadn't have been uh, bumped by uh, Hillary Clinton in the most monstrous fashion. By the way, they're on about Wiki, WikiLeaks and uh, Russian interference in, in elections. It wasn't the Russians that, dis that determined the elections. In the That's just arrant nonsense. How anyone in their right mind, you've got to be feeble-minded to believe this stuff about the Russians, the Russians, the Russians. It seems now that if you've got bad weather, it's caused by the Russians, or you've got a, a, a pimple on your ass, it's caused by the Russians. This is it's, it's this monstrous nonsense. Actually, it was uh, it was uh, the, on, on Russia Today. They, 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 they interviewed, actually, a former editor or, or a spokesman of the Spectator magazine which is a right-wing conservative magazine, by the way, and he, he was questioned about this business of Russian interference in the American election. He says, look, this is all nonsense. It's quite right, it is nonsense. And what it shows, the only thing it shows to me is this, the stupidity of the American Democrats, who to this day have not understood why Trump won the election. That's a fact. The main reason he won the election is, is simple, that the American people in general are fed up of both the Republicans and the Democrats, and Trump apparently suggested uh, represented something new, that's all, which he doesn't, of course. He doesn't, as they will soon find out. But nevertheless, Bernie Sanders also got considerable uh, support and could have won, except that he was uh, deliberately removed and excluded by undemocratic means, by dirty means, by, by Hillary Clinton and the... And the, and the uh, the gang that uh, is in charge of the Democrat Party. And this was revealed in WikiLeaks. Now what astonishes me is this. All this fuss about the Russians were responsible for the leaks. Well, I don't know if they were or they weren't. But one thing is clear. These, well, nobody now is talking about the content of these emails. The content of, of the stuff that was... And that's the purpose of it. These uh, emails are a damning proof of the criminality and the dirty politics of the Democrats, that's a fact, and of Hillary Clinton, that's a simple fact. Nobody talks about that anymore. Oh, it's the Russians, the Russians, you know. There was a spokesman from WikiLeaks who now is in hiding in Brazil, because if he was here, he'd be arrested. In democratic Britain, he'd be arrested and in jail. Look at the vindictive treatment of Assange, who's, although he was, uh, the Swedes have dropped this nonsense about a rape case, he's still locked up and uh, in, in the Ecuadorian embassy. That shows the, vindic the vindictiveness and the cruelty of the, uh, of the Western so-called democracies, America and Britain, if it comes to that. Yes, the spokes, this spokesman, speaking from Brazil, he said the following in relation to this business of the Russians. He said, now look, if 
uh, emails or, or, or whatever information is put on my desk. I don't ask where it comes from. What I ask is two questions. A, is it true? And B, is it in the public interest to publish? And if, if the answer is affirmative on both those questions, then of course I will publish. And they did publish. So did the Washington Post and other things. Publish this stuff in relation to Hillary Clinton. Now it's all been forgotten. It's all, never mind about the content. It's the Russians, the Russians. By the way, there isn't a shred of evidence, not a shred of evidence that the Russians were behind this. But even if they were, what difference does it make? It's the actual content of the thing that one has to look at. No, no, they've ganged up on, the whole of the establishment has ganged up on, on Trump because he's a maverick, because he can't be trusted to do as he's told, as Hillary Clinton undoubtedly. She's an agent, she's a direct puppet of Wall Street. She could be relied upon. Trump cannot. That's why they ganged up on him in the, in the way that they have, including all of the intelligence services and the FBI and so on. So, what, what position should we take in relation to this conflict? Well, it's an interesting conflict. It's an unprecedented conflict. I don't, can't think of anything like this in history, where an elected president is in conflict with all of the intelligence services and with the FBI and so on and so forth, and all of the media, who've ganged up on him in, the, in quite a monstrous way, as a matter of fact, irrespective of what you think of Trump. The way they've conducted themselves is completely monstrous. There is not a shred of evidence for this, but they've built a massive case in order to discredit him and, if possible, get rid of him. I don't know that they can get him, get rid of him very easily because it, well, no, it's not simple. In order to in order to impeach him, are they shouting and bawling about an impeachment? That's nonsense. They can't impeach him without the votes of Congress, and he's got uh, the Republicans got a majority, except for a handful of idiots like. Uh, McCain and so on and so forth. They've got a majority, they can't impeach him, but they're doing their damnedest to do so. And what this, there's a lesson here, you see. There's an important lesson. First of all, what side do we take? Well, you know, it's snakes against crocodiles, isn't it? Poisonous snakes against crocodiles. We don't take any side in this. We watch with some degree of pleasure. I must confess, with some degree of amusement. We watch this open public conflict split, uh, an open split in the ruling class of the United States of America. That itself, by the way, is a, a, a forerunner and a warning of a profound social and political crisis in America, which is preparing the way for revolutionary developments in the future. You better not doubt this, because it's... Uh, it, it's a fact. No, we can't support either side, obviously, in this, but we should use this to explain to American workers and to explain the, to, to the young people in America in particular the rottenness of so-called, the falsity of so-called democracy in the United States, which is just run by a gang, run by Wall Street, by bankers and by capitalists. That's the point. The reason they want to get rid of, they don't like uh, Trump, is purely because he's, he's a maverick and they can't... Uh, control it. They like to control people. And therefore the whole thing is a, is, a, is a charade, is a circus, which shows the complete hollowness of so-called democracy, which they always talk about. Democracy this, democracy that. Well, the rotten nature of so-called bourgeois democracy is there for all to see now, you know. So please take note and please draw all the necessary conclusions.